I want to talk about one supplement that has been getting a lot of, not a lot, but let's say has been getting some negative attention. And my mom, I was, and it's a supplement I take all the time. It's called oregano oil. And I love <laughs> oregano oil and I've been taking it for years. And my mom called me a couple of weeks ago when all of this self-isolation hit and we were in quarantine. And she was, and she had told me that I should turn on the news because the news is saying that, you know, oregano oil may not be good for you and can cause more harm than good. I want to get to the science. Number one, is there science behind oregano? And I want to know, does it help to support and boost our immune system? Oregano is one of those things. Uh, I will be honest. It's one of my pets. I love it. I go through it like you would not believe. I, I am nutty enough. I even cook with it. It's, it's one of my favorite things out there. I've been doing this probably 30, 35 years. I've been using oil of oregano. I love it. I probably have a good half dozen bottles in my house of the various forms to make sure no matter which way I want it, I got it. Now, you have to understand, oil of oregano is made from oregano essential oil. And I don't care what essential oil you're talking about, they're potent. As soon as you move to something that's a spice-based oil, it's even more potent. Now, the reason I'm going into that, I'm saying is, you want to treat it with respect. And they may say, no, how do you respect an oil? It's an inanimate object. The way you respect it is you respect its potency and its power. You can overdose on it and you can go way too far. The adage that if a little is good, a lot is better does not apply here. And that's where I think a lot of the concern around oregano oil is happening. That's one reason. Another reason is there's a sector in our industry that unfortunately likes to overhype stuff. And as soon as you start overhyping, what you do is you start making claims that are non-justifiable and that's when people catch you. And it, it, it's wrong, it, it is. Instead, we'd like to sit and say, okay, this is what we know, not what we think, this is what we know, and that's what you base your decisions on. And oregano is one of those things. We know X about it, we know it can do this. Under these circumstances, we think it might do some other stuff, but we're not going to talk about that today because it's not what we know. Now, many spice essential oils, not just oil of oregano, are potent anti pathogens. In particular, oregano is widely recognized because it is a potent antimicrobial, antiviral, and antifungal. Now, here's the kicker all the testing on that has been done either in a petri dish, in lab settings, or in animals other than humans. But this led oregano to being studied also for its immune boosting activity. And in that case, we have actually done studies on multiple animal species, including humans. We don't know the exact mechanism of how it does it, but it does boost the immune system. We believe it's the relationship between two of oregano's key components. And every essential oil has a class of components called terpenes. Some people pronounce them terpenes. Terpenes are the volatile compounds where as soon as you open the bottle, you get this woof of smell. All those are the terpenes leaving the oil. So two of the specific ones that oregano has that have been studies are carvacrol and thymol. And what makes oregano fairly unique because carvacrol and thymol are also found in numerous other spice oils, for example, rosemary, sage, um, thyme. Uh, what sets oregano difference is the ratio between carvacrol and thymol. It's high in carvacrol and low in thymol. They both, they both do exert activity in the body, but at the various levels, and it's the, they believe the interplay between them that gives oregano its strength. Now, one thing you do have to note, all spice oils are strong. I don't care which oil it is, they're strong. If you have a tendency to have issues with spice oils or even with spices themselves, you're gonna wanna take one of the forms that isn't a direct oil. Like a capsule. Like a capsule or there's also buffered oils out there where they've added other oils such as orange and lemon to reduce the taste. But you also have to be careful of capsules. If it's an oil capsules, for example, a soft gel, a lot of people who have 
issues with spices, also have issues with them. There are, oil, there are capsules out there where they've spray dried the oil onto something like calcium or onto fiber. Those tend, people tend to be able to tolerate much better. Oh, wow. Now, what, so I just want to repeat again. So there yep. is research 100% on the benefits of oregano oil on helping our immune system. Correct. On boosting it, yes. Okay. They, they're not certain exactly how it does it, but they know it does it. So it helps to support our immune system and boost it. How Correct. much oregano oil, what, what does the research say on the dosaging? The research is wide on that. From very low dose to ridiculously high dose to the point where I would say you'd have a hard time, even someone like me who's been doing it for decades would have a hard time handling it. My personal bent on it is I use a super strength oil liquid and I take two drops a day regularly. If I'm at a time where it's everyone around me is sick or I'm concerned about it or I'm feeling under the weather, I'll double it to two drops twice a day. That to me is fairly potent. And I, I'm not joking. I take it and I start feeling it right here after literally three seconds. You can feel it warming. You make a good distinction because there are some that are extra strength or super strength, some that are regular strength. I normally take regular strength and I'll do 10 drops under my tongue and then I'll drink it down with some water if I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. One thing I do want to ask you, and I've heard, again, differing opinions on this, but I want to know what the research says. I've heard that you're saying you take it every single day, two drops every single day. Now that's a very small dosage, but I've heard that if you take it for long periods of time, it actually can disrupt your like the good bacteria in our gut. Is that true? There are theories on that. I have not seen a single clinical paper that addresses that either positively or negatively. What I can say in my own personal experience is I hedge my bets. And what I do is I take oregano daily and I wait at least a half an hour and then I take a probiotic daily. Mm. I, I do both. I'm, 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 a, I'm a person who hedges my bets. I'll be honest. If there's no research out there telling me one way or the other, I go, hey, it's not going to hurt me. Why not do both? <laughs> no, that's good information because I was curious because I've heard it. You know, I've heard that it does. I've heard that it doesn't. But you're telling me according to, to what you have personally read. You don't know, I guess, every single thing out there. But what have you read? You've never come across anything that have said that is said. Correct. That. And I've looked because uh, people have said to me that before and have asked me that question. Uh, we've looked, uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate in my family, I have a medical research librarian who, this is what she does, and she hasn't been able to find it either. Interesting. And that, and that person is? My wife. <laughs> so she's pretty close. That's why I want to make sure that- Very close. <laughs> so the two of you, wow, you guys on your spare time must have, you guys, you guys are fun. <laughs> Uh, it depends on your definition of fun, but we, 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 we tend to think we have a good time. I love it. No, I think that's great. No, again, it's coming back to the science and the research and you do that research. So I, I want to be very clear and I, I love that.